Hello, welcome to the series on how to transition from an absolute beginner to a professional in power system analysis using ETAP software. Now, if you're new to this channel, I actually need a couple of favors from you. The first one is to subscribe to the channel by clicking the subscribe icon. Now, you don't need to worry because it is absolutely free. The second favor I need from you is to like and share this video to your friends and loved ones. And lastly, I need you to turn on the notifications by clicking on the notification bell in order to get notified the moment I upload a new video. Now, jumping right into business, in our last session, I explained the step-by-step -step procedure which is required to perform a load flow analysis. If you haven't watched that video, it is crucial you go back and watch the video. I'll be dropping the link in the description below. However, it is not only enough to perform the, the load flow analysis or power flow analysis. It is vital to understand the results obtained after performing the load flow analysis in order to provide adequate solutions to problems. If any. Now problems such as overloading of transformers, if you don't understand that the transformer is overloaded, how do you bring up solutions like load shading? If there is an undervoltage effect at the downstream, how do you mitigate that effect by introducing transformer tap changers and introduction of capacitor banks? Now without knowing the problem, you cannot provide a solution. So today's session will be on how to interpret the results obtained after performing a load flow analysis. Now we'll be running our load flow analysis based on our last example and we'll be using the loading configurations, zero effect, generation category, zero effect. Like I said, the video, the link to the video from our last session will be in the description below. So we'll run the load flow. Now, this is the result ETAP generates. This 100%, the, everything, in, everything in percentage here indicates the bus voltage in percentage. So we can see 100%, 99.88. These are all the voltage magnitudes of the buses. This voltage magnitude of the bus bar. Now, we can also see that some bus bars are black, some are pink while others are red. Now this black means it is operating in a perfectly fine condition. The bus bars are healthy, operating in a healthy condition. However, this pink indicates a marginal situation, meaning it is either slightly over, it is either slightly experiencing an over voltage or slightly experiencing an under voltage. And in this case, it is experiencing a slight level of under voltage because according to IEEE, it is a voltage regulation principle of plus or minus 5%, which I explained in our last session. So, this is 97% and it is marginal. This is 96.65%. It is still pink, meaning it is marginal. However, this is red meaning it is critical and it needs an immediate correction meaning you need to provide an adequate solution for this as soon as possible the pink can be managed but the red needs an immediate solution now we can see this one is 95.4 percent but it is still pink why is that that is because it has not yet exceeded the limit. The limit is 95% for under voltage. It is 95%. For over voltage, it is 105%. Anything that is outside that limit is seen as a problem. So that is for the bus voltages. Now we can also see the active and reactive power flow, which is from flowing through each bus bar. This is 2245 kilowatts and 1521 kV. We can choose the units we want. We can change it to amps. 
and apparent power now we can see the apparent power and if yours is not showing the kva and a all you need to do is to come to this unit and toggle this this removes the unit and this inputs the unit so switching back to kilowatts and kva now we can see the active and reactive power flow through this next thing we're going to is to generate an output report like i said i'll be explaining how to interpret load flow results you click and we'll go to result load flow and we'll click ok it up generates the report so we maximize this now this is the file name and details However, our major concern is on the load flow report. Now, we can see that this is the bus ID, bus 1, bus 2, bus 3, bus 4. Now, this bus that is asterisk indicates a swing bus. We can see that at the end of the report, indicates a voltage regulated bus, voltage controlled or swing type machine connected to it. Now, we can see this is the bus ID, this is the rating, this is the imputed rating. If you notice from bus 1, the actual rating is 33 kV, bus 2, 33 kV, however, bus 3 is 11 kV. And it shows us the rating here bus 1, 33, bus 2, 33 kV, bus 3, 11 kV. So this is the rating we entered. However, on this part, this is the operating voltage magnitude. Okay? Bus 1 is at 100%, while bus 2 99.884. We can verify that from here. Bus 100%, bus 2 99.88. Going back to the report. So, this is for the voltage, operating voltage magnitude, while these are for the phase angles of the bus bars. Now, on this part, this is for the generation. We recall that. From our single line diagram, the swing bus is bus 1 only. The power grid is attached to bus 1 only. There is no other power source here. So, coming to the report generation, we can see that the power grid is generating 2.245 megawatts of active power, and this is the reactive power value. And all these other values are zero because there is no other source of power attached to any bus bar and we come to the load now on the loading you can see that bus 1 is 0 active power reactive power 0 bus 2 and just like that until we get to bus 6 now we can see the amount of load 0 0.271 0 0.168 why is that that's because there's no load connected to bus 1 bus 2 bus 3 bus 4 bus 5 however a lump load is connected to bus 6 now having explained that the same thing happens all through then coming to this part this part is now the load flow this is the active power flow on this bus and this is the reactive power flow on this bus now this is the current in amperes now remember when i switched units let's see let's go to amps remember on bus one we are seeing 47.4 amps and from here the result obtained is still 47.4 amps and this is the power factor on each of the buses so that is explaining what we have in the load flow report now a vital thing i would like to show you is called the branch losses report so you click on the report manager and you go to summary losses okay and to generate the report and this is a very crucial report now like i said the branch elements in this network are transmission lines and transformers now this shows the active and reactive power flow between buses line one line one is this 
line 2 active and reactive power flow between the buses which they are connected to so now let's find line 1 this is line 1 yes line 1 now between this bus and this bus bus 1 and 2 this is the active power flow and reactive power flow same thing applies to every other element here because there are branch elements connecting two elements together now this is two from both now when what is coming in is this what is going out is this now these are the losses now this is my primary concern the losses but before i go into that let me explain this side now from from the bus which is connected to let's take line one as an example line one is from bus one to bus two and from bus one bus one is at 100 percent operating voltage we check 100 percent while bus two is at 99.88 percent but here it approximated it so we have 100 percent to 99.9 percent but the voltage drop now is this minus this which is why we are having 0 0.1 to here the voltage drop is this minus this removing this from this we have this that is how we have our voltage drop now coming to the losses now the aim of load flow report is primarily four things the first one is to determine the operating voltage the second one which i've shown you which is this this is the operating voltage these are the operating voltages of the buses and you can also see them here is in percentage then the second aim of load flow analysis is to determine the phase angles of the buses which i showed you in the previous report then the third aim of load performing the load flow analysis is to determine the active power losses the active power losses which is this this is the active power losses the total power loss active power loss we are having is 92.8 kilowatts and the total reactive power loss we are having is 186.9 so we have achieved the primary aim of load flow analysis we know the active and reactive power flow through various branches and loads we know the active and reactive power losses we know the bus operating voltages and we also know the bus phase angles so this will end our session for today if you have any questions you can drop a comment below or send a message in our ETAP community now if you're not part of our ETAP community drop a comment below requesting to join and you'll be added as soon as possible and it is absolutely free thank you very much